Hi, and welcome to Bible Bites. Have you ever thought about what soybeans and Jesus could have in common? I have been recently. So stay tuned after the break if you want to find out more. Welcome back. If you're thinking this lady is crazy, you're <laughs> not wrong. I have a lot of crazy thoughts sometimes, but soybeans and Jesus do have something in common, I promise. But a little backstory first. <laughs> Recently we had our new baby and he is just about two months old, but he's been having some digestive issues related to my dietary needs. So whatever I eat, he gets. And we've been trying to figure that out. First we thought it was just dairy, but turns out it was soy as well. He's got a sensitive little tummy. So I have been trying to look for soy in everything, trying to make sure that I'm not ingesting it. And let me tell you, soy oil or soybean oil is in everything. It's like in everything. I even found it in my hand lotion, but I, I'm still gonna use that because I'm not eating lotion. So I was <laughs> thinking about this and I was like, what if we searched out Jesus, like I'm searching out this random ingredient in everything that I eat? And if you've ever had a food allergy before, or maybe just a sensitivity to something, you're used to reading labels and looking for things diligently. You want to make sure that you're not gonna get sick. And in this case, I wanna make sure I'm not gonna make my son sick because it's awful, he spits up a lot, and it's gross. I'm like, I wanna make sure I'm not eating anything that's gonna make him feel bad. So, that's how soybeans relate to Jesus. But, more importantly, let's look at a Bible verse that also tells us a little bit about this. If you wanna read in Jeremiah chapter 29, we're gonna read verse 13. And this is uh, just a couple of verses after um, verse 11, which is everybody's favorite verse from Jeremiah to quote that I know the plans I have for you, that one. And this one is um, a promise from God. It's, it says <clears throat> in verse 13, it says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And that's what <laughs> searching for soybeans and soybean oil reminded me of. I'm searching for it rigorously. But are we looking for God rigorously in our lives? Are we searching for him with all our hearts and like seeking him out in everything we do? Now, there comes a point when I'm not going to run into soybean oil in like going like on a drive. Like I'm not gonna, I don't think they've turned that into a fuel yet. But if we're seeking Jesus out in everything we do, it should be uh, evident in our lives. So I wanted to give us uh, kind of three ideas of how we can keep Jesus at the center of everything that we do, just like it seems that soy is at the center of most foods that are made today. So first, be in the Word. Jesus, this is, he's everywhere in Scripture. This is God's letter to us so that we can get to know him better, that we can spend time with him. Spend time in God's word every day. That is super important to making sure that we're seeking him with all of our heart. The second thing is prayer. Talking to God. Uh, sometimes I think, I mean, at least for me, having a newborn, it can be really hard to be in the word and to be like, have a consistent prayer life. Recently, I've been like uh, thinking of prayer as like, you know, if I'm not talking to my husband all, every day, that would be really weird, right? If I wasn't, if I just lived here and I didn't talk to him, and didn't say anything. It's kind of similar with uh, with God. If you're not talking to him, but you're in a relationship with him, it's like you're not going to learn anything. You're not going to grow. So sometimes I will find myself just shooting off like little text message prayers. I'll be like, oh my goodness, please help me. Like, get through this day. I need your energy. Um, it's 
really tiring having a new little baby if you haven't had kids yet. It's exhausting but well worth it. <laughs> so if you, even if you want to start there and just shoot off those text message prayers and wait for one to come back, it's a good way to start. Um, and then the third way, which is also challenging just in the season that we're in right now with COVID, is being in fellowship. That's a great way to continue to be seeking God and doing discipleship. That can be hard, but you can do it through technology if you're not able to meet in person. I love doing discipleship um, with a few gals, and that's just super encouraging to me. It's always, it's sometimes hard to schedule um, with all of our busyness as uh, <laughs> humans sometimes, but it's well worth it to find that time to fellowship and continue to seek Jesus in that group setting or one-on-one -on -one setting. So the next time you're reading a food label or um, looking for something, maybe think about, are you seeking Jesus as rigorously as you are this item? Uh, I hope this encouraged you guys today and wasn't too strange, but I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.